everybody, my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny. Thank you for joining me in today's video, which is all about what I made in January. So if you'd seen my January sewing plans, you would have seen that I set myself a target to make four different items. And glad to say that I did make all of those items as well as a couple extra as well one of which uh, I'm wearing today, um, but I will go into that a little bit later. So let's start off with uh, the things that I said that I was going to make. So first off, I'm gonna show you this one. And this is the Wardrobe By Me Whisper Blouse. Now I have done a sew along for the Whisper Blouse and you may have seen from my uh, December makes, uh, as well from that. Um, I made it in a navy double gauze with this kind of gold fleck and I uh, got that from Felicity Fabrics for free in exchange for a review and uh, this double gauze I got from uh, Molly Archer Designs and I will link her shop down below. She's quite a small shop um, but I was following her over on Instagram and when she said she was selling some fabrics I thought yes I needed to give her a little bit of support. So I bought this lovely kind of sage green double gauze and it's got these little flowers and little dots on. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice one. So this version is actually different from the one that I did uh, last month. So the blue one, I made a front placket uh, version and the rolled up sleeves. This one is just the bog standard plain basic one. So I wanted to try out the different um, styles. And I have to admit, this one's lovely as well. And it is so super easy to do. The neckband, if you can see here, it is just double folded and then top stitched. So I've top stitched it with a zigzag just because I thought that would be a nice finish. And because double gauze, it's not stretchy, but I wanted it to have enough give to it. And I just thought that the zigzag was actually just a really nice little finish to it. I've done the same for the cuffs as well, just a double fold and a zigzag top stitch and the same for the hem. So I love double gauze because you can see here, it does kind of look a bit creasy and that is because I have worn it and washed it and I don't really tend to iron double gauze unless I kind of maybe folded it up and it has some really deep creases, then I will just kind of maybe just show it the iron like very, very carefully. But all these little individual kind of creases all add to the fabric, I think. And I do kind of like that look. So yeah, it's just a really simple, straightforward sew. I really like the look of this. And yeah, I just think double gauze it's just such a versatile fabric. It's so soft and cuddly, keeps you warm in the cold, and I think it'll keep me very cool in the summer as well. So yeah, very happy with that one. Okay, so next up, um, I said that I wanted to make the Wilder gown, and this is by Friday Pattern Company. And I wanted to, I've done the dress version before, but I wanted to actually just do the blouse version, which is on the back here. It's just this version here. And um, I had some fabric, again, this one was Felicity Fabrics, but this one I bought. Um, and here it is. It's absolutely gorgeous, this fabric. It's a viscose and it's on a black background with all these gorgeous, gorgeous leaves in these different colours. So we've got pinks and purples and greens and blues. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. And I actually picked this up in their remnant section. And I think this was about 1.25 meters and it fit the pieces just about right. Like I literally just managed to squeeze it in. And um, the only thing that I couldn't cut was this bow. And actually, I think that it's actually probably a happy accident because I really like the contrast of just having the black tie so this is just a um, viscose that I had in my stash just a plain black so I just used a little snippet of that and use that as the little tie so I think it really works well like that and it's a really nice little blouse nice and easy to construct I really like this kind of um, curled up kind of neckline it's all kind of bunched up 
here and you just create a channel and the instructions in the pattern they are so so good i really like friday uh, friday pattern company's instructions and um it's just a really nice little sew so yeah i'm really happy with that one and i'm hoping to get a bit more wear out of this probably in the spring summer time um i think it's probably more of a kind of maybe going out sort of blouse or maybe if I can ever get back to the office, then that would be quite nice, teamed up with a pair of black trousers as well. So yeah, hopefully I'll get a little bit more wear out of that at some point. <laughs> okay, so the next pattern that I'm going to show you that I made up was the Tilly and the Buttons Ness Skirt. And this pattern has two different variations. You've got the mini skirt and you've got the one that sits just below the knee. So this one's the mini here. And then you've got uh, this one, which is the longer length on the front. And this is actually the version that I made. And the fabric that I used for this was a uh, denim that I had in my stash. I can't remember for the life of me where the denim came from. Um, but it's a really nice lightweight kind of denim. So here it is, if I can get it far enough back for you to see it in full view. <laughs> and this skirt is actually a really nice little sew. I must admit, it was a little bit more challenging than a lot of the patterns that I have made recently. And that mainly is to do with the little details that it has. So you can notice here that it does have top stitching. So that's the front and that's the back. You can see that my top stitching does not match up <laughs> at the back here at all, but you know what? I just thought no one's really going to notice that. I also don't know if the pocket and the side is meant to line up. I couldn't really get that to line up at all, and I don't know if it was meant to or not, but that doesn't really match up. But again, it's all these little details that no one's really going to notice. But overall, I'm very happy with it. Instructions go through how to construct this zip fly as well. So it's secured with the little jeans button. And then if I undo that, then we've got the zip fly here. You can see there. And I'm really happy with how that looks. It went in really nicely nice, clean finish. One thing I actually do have to search about the front fly is the instructions in the booklet they are okay for tilly instructions i was kind of expecting maybe a little bit more hand holdy but she does have a link in the instructions to a uh, video over on youtube and that video is absolutely perfect it shows every single step of the way so when it came to inserting the zip fly I more or less ignored the instructions in the booklet and I just went straight over to the video and um, followed her instructions there. So I will insert um, in the description box the video um, which she links to for this because it is so, so helpful. As I said, I ignored the booklet instructions and just used the video and this turned out really, really well. I'm very happy with this and the finish and it is really clean even on the inside you know I don't often show the inside of my garments because you know sometimes they might not look that neat but this one I'm actually really proud of with how it looks on the inside as well so yeah I'm really happy with it I finished it off with this gorgeous little label from uh, Little Rosy Cheeks which I thought went really nicely with the rainbow thread and what I love about this as well is that I used a fat quarter for the pockets and it was from the So Haley Jane box. Um, I can't remember what month it was, but it was like the space themed box. And I used the fat quarter for the pocket lining, which is this lovely kind of rainbow space print. So I was really happy with that. One thing I do have to say just about the um, pocket bags. So these ones, <laughs> is, um, as I said, I used a fat quarter from my So Haley Jane box, but the pattern piece for this doesn't actually fit on a fat quarter completely if you're following the grain line. 
So what I did is I actually turned my fat quarter piece around and cut the um, pockets off grain. Now, I don't think that matters because it's just a pocket. It doesn't matter kind of necessarily what way the grain goes. But the only thing is, if you've got um, a directional print, then, you know, it won't you know, sit um, the way you want it to. So I think if you are gonna use a fat quarter for this skirt, for the pocket linings, then just make sure you use um, a fat quarter that doesn't have directional print. So, I mean, on here, as I say, you can't tell that that, you know, isn't the right direction at all. And because it's a pocket, it's not gonna affect kind of any way of the, uh, the way that, you know, you wear the skirt. So yeah, uh, also, yes, we've got a front slit at the bottom there, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with my top stitching, and you can probably see at the bottom, my top stitching actually kind of matches the front as well, like all along the bottom. So yay. <laughs> so I think with this make, I did actually learn quite a bit. I'm very happy that I tackled this before I'm going to start tackling any jeans. I have to admit, I haven't worn it loads because, you know, I haven't really been able to go out really and, and wear it, but it is really comfortable. It fits me really, really well. I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern and it fits me beautifully around the waist. It's just got you know, kind of like enough give to be comfortable, but there's no gaping at the back or anything like that. You know, I can pop a few fingers kind of around, you know, the waist and everything. And uh, so it's nice and easy to tuck tops and things into and really, really comfortable. So um, yeah, I forgot to actually say, I made a size four um, in this one. As I say, it fit my measurements perfectly. I'm a 30 waist and a 40 hip. And a size four says it's meant for a 30 waist and a 39 hip. So, and yeah, it fits me perfectly around the hip as well, obviously with the, um, like the give of it as well. And now onto the make which won the sew along for January. So I said that I wanted to make a lounge set and that was going to be made up of the Grainline Studio Linden sweatshirt for the top half. And then for the bottom half, I wanted to use the True Bias Hudson pants, which is, I love that pattern so much. I love both of these patterns. I've sewn them both up quite a few times. So anyway, I started off with the sew along making up the uh, Linden sweatshirt. So here is the Linden sweatshirt. So the fabric that I used was from uh, Sew Wardrobe. And I bought this ages ago in one of their sales. So it is no longer available, but I loved it because you've got all these girls and these little cats. And I just thought it was so, so cute. And then what I've done is I have teamed it up with a contrasting fabric for the cuffs, the neck band, and the bottom cuff as well. And this is a French Terry that I got from eBay. So this French Terry, it's not the best French Terry that I've used. It doesn't have as much stretch as my other French Terries. So normally I can get away with using French Terry, no problem for cuffs and neck bands, the stuff that I normally buy. It's not, it's not too bad, but you can just see there, it's just kind of not quite as stretchy. But anyway, it worked, it just was a bit fiddly adding the cuffs on, I really had to stretch it. So that was the first item of the loungewear. And then moving on to the Hudson pants by True Bias. So again, same fabric with those uh, ladies and the cats. And again, the same contrasting fabric as well. Now you can instantly see here that I've got some rippling going on um, on here. You can see that it's quite at the top um, it's kind of quite ripply and when you stretch it out it's okay so when I'm wearing it it's okay but yeah just as it is I've got this kind of bunching and the reason behind that is that I was not prepared and I thought I had the correct um, size elastic like the width elastic you meant to use a two inch wide um, elastic 
I didn't have any of my two inch wide elastic left. I, well, I did, I only had about this much. Um, so I had to use a slightly narrower elastic. I think this one was one and a quarter. But yeah, so basically I don't have elastic in this top bit. So that's why it's kind of causing that. But in all my other ones, you don't get that. Um, but yeah, I just kind of thought I would just mention that in case anyone's wondering. And then what I did is I did do the um, two rows of stitching to create a channel, but I didn't actually put in the buttonholes at the front and insert the drawstring because I don't think it's needed. So I've made um, a few pairs of these and I've done it in a variety of ways. I've done some where I have done these two lines of stitching. I've done ones where I haven't done the top stitching and I've just anchored it in place at the sides and the back uh, just to prevent the elastic kind of twisting or anything. And that gives quite a nice finish as well. But anyway, yes, I made a size eight in the Hudson pants as well. Um, I used the contrast uh, fabric for the pockets as well and also the cuffs. So these fit really, really nicely. A few people did ask about, you know, is there a possibility of making them a bit higher rise? And I do believe that True Bias have released a blog post which explains how to make these high rise because of the uh, the pockets as well. They show you kind of how to lift those up as well and put them in the right position. So for anyone that's interested in some high rise ones, then yeah, check out that blog post because that would probably be really, really helpful for you. But yeah, I love my little lounge set. I've worn it quite a lot. And um, yeah, I'm really, really wanting to make another set. <laughs> I do have, um, I do have a lounge set or a couple of lounge sets already, but I feel like I just need more. So uh, yeah, that was the um, fourth item that I said I was going to make. Okay, so on to the extras <laughs> that I did. So I said uh, about this top at the beginning of the video, this is the Soho 7 toaster sweater. Let me just grab the pattern. Okay, so here is the pattern. So yeah, the Soho 7 toaster sweater. So it comes in two versions. This version here is a um, more relaxed fit with a split hem at the bottom and then has this kind of funnel neck, uh, kind of like an open funnel neck. And then this version here is uh, like a taller um, funnel neck and then we have cuffs at the bottom of the sleeves and cuff at the bottom uh, band here. So this version I made is this one and this is the second toaster sweater that I have made. Um, I haven't actually made this version yet. Um, I should really try it at some point but this one I love. It's such a cosy jumper and I just think it just looks really, really nice, like the finishes on it, because you can make it all on the overlocker, so you don't get to see any stitching or anything. Not to say that you can't make it if you don't have an overlocker, it's just I love my overlocker and I just love the fact that I could just use one machine. <laughs> so um, yeah, this fabric, I mean, it's gorgeous isn't it and um reminds me of my little cat misty because she's my little uh, black panther and um i bought this fabric it was quite a while ago it was actually my first ever purchase from first for fabrics because i won a voucher for first for fabrics i think it was in november i think november 2019 i think it was I won a competition um, and I won a voucher. I think it was for about, oof, I don't know actually, maybe it'd been about like 30 pounds or something. And so I bought this fabric, but this was a, I think it's a stuff of Denmark fabric, um, really lovely quality. So it was quite pricey. And so I um, only bought a meter. I was just looking at my stash and I just saw it and I thought, this would make a beautiful toaster sweater. It's all brushed on the inside, like fleecy on the inside, so it's so cosy. And I had a meter of it, and I managed to get most of the pattern pieces out, all apart from the cuff pieces and the bottom band, which I will insert a picture so you can see in full view. 
Now I did make a small adjustment to the pattern. All I did was I extended the bodice before the cuff by two inches. So um, in between the cuff and the bodice, I extended the front piece by two inches. And that is just because I have a slightly longer body, I think, and this does sit, I think, without that um, two inches, it does sit um, kind of at my jeans line. And I don't really like that because then if I raise my arms up, then you just see midriff. And the whole point of this, I think for me, is meant to be really nice and cozy. So if I added on that two inches and then put the cuff on, you'll see in the picture, it just kind of sits just below my jeans waistline. So it means it kind of sits more actually at my hips. So I do prefer that um, just for um, a jumper. But yeah, I was really happy that I managed to get this out of a meter with just having the cuffs in a different contrasting fabric. So this was just some French terry that I had in my stash. So this I think was from the Maker's Merchant. And um, yeah, this is what I kind of mean by the difference in French terry. So if I show you the cuff of the Linden sweatshirt, um, so this French terry, I was showing you here the stretch of that. Now, if I show you the stretch of this one, you can see that this one has so much more stretch in it. And so absolutely no problem in getting that kind of over your hand or stretched around the cuff. So I hope that kind of makes sense on that. But yeah, this is a lovely, lovely quality French Terry. Um, but yes, I'm really happy with this one. I love all the little cats. Um, it stands up quite well, this collar. It's kind of, it's not kind of really rigid. It does have a bit of drape to it, but it's not tight around the neck. So it's enough to kind of keep you all nice and cozy and warm, but without feeling like really restricted. I love the toaster sweater. Again, I want to make so many more. Whenever I feel cold, I'm always reaching for one of my toaster sweaters. And also I have to say that Stuart, my other half, he really likes this pattern. Whenever I've made um, anything from this pattern, he always says that it always looks like a really, really nice professional make. So not that my other makes don't look professional, but he likes this pattern. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was the toaster sweater. I'll show you another couple of things that I made as well. So um, in January, um, I have two birthday, two birthdays in the family. So it is Stuart's birthday and it is also my brother's birthday. So I wanted to make Stuart something. I mean, he, I did say to him, you know, do you, is there anything you particularly want? You know, I'm happy to make you something because he is, you know, reasonably fussy with his wardrobe. You know, he kind of, he likes the, the things that he buys and, um, you know, he's kind of happy for, for me to make some basics and things. But I said to him, was there anything that he wanted? And he did actually say that he wouldn't mind a pyjama t-shirt, but kind of like a full length long sleeve one because it's been a bit cold and everything, you know, kind of like he doesn't really have anything that's gonna keep him kind of quite warm kind of at night time and a lot of like pajamas and things you know for men are normally like short sleeved so he wanted a long sleeved um pajama top so um i was having a look in my stash to see if there was something that i could use for him because i was initially going to say okay well i'll pick out or i'll show you some fabrics and you can pick out what you like and he just said no 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 just give me something from your stash i don't care what it is it's only going to be a pajama top but I still wanted to make it a little bit nice for him. So I managed to find this fabric in my stash and this fabric I used for my Tilly and the Buttons Frankie tee. Um, I used it just for the sleeves and I did a black contrast front and back. And I picked this fabric up as a remnant from the Maker's Merchant. I think it was something like one point seven or 1.8 meters I think remnant piece so this has made enough for a men's long sleeve t-shirt as well as my little sleeves for my uh, Frankie so this pattern is the uh, Nico by Jally Patterns which I'll grab for you here 
So this is the pattern there. So you can see there are a few variations of this. So it's all raglan sleeve. So you've got a short sleeve, a uh, half sleeve and a full length sleeve. Now I have made him this one um, in the past with a short sleeve. I did a black front and green sleeve. Or was it green front and black sleeve? I can't remember. I think I've got a picture of it somewhere. I'll try and insert it if I can. <laughs> so I have made one of these before. So I knew that it was going to fit him all okay. So yeah, this pattern, really, really nice and straightforward. Um, I kind of didn't really pay much attention to the instructions, I'll be perfectly honest, because I think it was talking about doing some like twin needling and things like that. And I've made so many raglan um, t-shirts for myself. It's just in my mind, it's second nature now. I know what I kind of need to do. All I do mostly is just check seam allowances for things like this. But it's a really nice little pattern. So um, yeah, full length sleeve. And also you may notice here, I've put in a little contains cat hair label for him because um, yeah, Bentley, our little ginger cat, likes to shed his fluff <laughs> everywhere. And um, we do allow our cats to sleep on the bed with us. <laughs> and Bentley does like to cuddle up um, with Stuart at night time. Uh, Bentley's definitely a little daddy's boy. <laughs> so I thought that one would be really nice to add in there. And Stuart actually did mention that when I was showing him some of, my, uh, some of my makes, he said that the rainbow overlock thread, he said, oh, that looks really smart. So I thought I would put the rainbow overlock thread in there as well for him. So, yeah, it fits him really, really nicely. Oh, yes. Also, just to say, I just finished off the, uh, the cuffs and the hem in a zigzag stitch, if you can see there. Uh, so yeah, it fits him really nicely and uh, yeah, I think he was very happy with it. I haven't got any pictures of him modelling it because he didn't feel quite comfortable doing that. But um, yeah, you can see it all here and yeah, fits him well and he has been using it loads. <laughs> And then, as I mentioned, it was my brother's birthday as well in January, so I wanted to make him something as well. Now, I've never made anything for my brother before, so I was a little bit nervous because I wasn't sure, you know, how it would fit him. But I thought safe bet was to go with a lounge set. Now, if you'd seen my video in December where I made Stuart a pair of the men's Hudson pants, um, I mentioned on that that I just kind of measured his a pair of his other joggers and kind of because I knew his uh, his waist measurement anyway from like the jeans that he buys. I kind of guessed and it paid off and they fit him beautifully. So I thought, do you know what? I'll give it a go with my brother as well. So I messaged my mum and I did ask her. I kind of said, do you know what his waist measurement kind of is at the moment? Last time I checked, I think it was this, but you know it changed and bless my mum my little secret squirrel um, she I think said to I think she uh, she uh, was chatting to my brother and she was saying that like oh over Christmas oh we ate so much you know like oh my waist is this size oh what's your waist now and he kind of said oh I'm probably around about this at the moment and so my mum fed back to me what he said <laughs> so well done mum <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I guessed on the waist measurement and actually he was very similar to Stuart so um, I was quite in luck there because I thought well the pair of Hudson pants that I made Stuart fit him well so hopefully fingers crossed they fit my brother well so I did make him a pair of men's Hudson pants but also I made him a top as well and that again was the Nico top and I made him the short sleeve version but I made it in French terry so it was more of like a kind of a lounge t-shirt not kind of necessarily a, a lightweight sort of t-shirt so um, I will insert a picture of the set because I used two fabrics I initially used the for the main part of the fabric was a Mario uh, themed French terry which I got from Rockstar Fabrics and that quality French terry is lovely. It was lovely and stretchy. It was really soft. 
and I loved it. And um, the contrast fabric that I made was a red French terry, which I got from the Maker's Merchant. They went so well together. I was so happy with how they looked. And um, I took them to Stuart to show him, saying, oh, I finished my set for my brother. And he was like, oh, they look really, really smart. He goes, <laughs> they're really nice. I did also insert um, a label, um, just said me made, one of the Kylie and the Machine labels as well. So um, yeah, so I posted that off to my brother for his birthday. And uh, yeah, he said that they fit really nicely. He loves them. Um, he did send me a picture of him wearing them, but he did say that he, you know, maybe didn't want to be shown on uh, on YouTube and everything, which is absolutely fine. So I've got lots of pictures um, that I took of them hanging up. You'll get the gist of them. Uh, but yeah, I was so, so happy with that set. And yeah, I kind of wanted to keep it for myself. <laughs> but yeah, so that was everything that I made in January. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, it'd be lovely if you could. And I will speak to you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.